I'm Bertram Torres and I'm riding the YZ65 Cup. My name is Holger Grimstokke and I drive a 80, YZ85 and I come from Norway. My name is Amelia, I came from Denmark. I ride in the 125 class against the boys. I'm from Portugal, my number is 999 I'm, I'm very happy to be here. My favorite thing about uh, being in the Blue Crew here is that I get new friends and getting to drive on an absolutely cool track that I've never driven on. It's a good uh, yeah, family and we stick together. It's fun to ride yeah, between all the GP riders because they're here and a big track. We in contact with the MX GP riders and it's awesome. White Dead Blue Crew Super Finale is about offering a memory which hopefully we stay for life to a group of the riders which have qualified coming from 23 countries around Europe. This year has been a record edition for us. We got more than 400 racers among 65, 85, 1 to 5 classes who have participated to the selection process and more than 100, actually 104, were racing here today uh, together with the MXGP, MX2, together with the World Championship uh, races. I think the YZ Cup is definitely an incredible opportunity for the kids. All those young riders uh, dream big. They can see now on social media uh, the racing, the MXGP racing, but now everything is real. Yes, the Blue Crew, uh... You know, we went like they do it here. It's amazing, you know, for young riders. I, I just remember back when I was in this age. I mean, if I could have do something like this, it would be it would be a dream, you know, to meet the top riders and this kind of thing. So yeah, very amazing. The super final success is built first of all by the effort that in 23 countries the Yamaha people are putting in connecting with the riders, in organizing national racing activities and finally supporting the selection to come here to enjoy this special moment together. But it's also due to the family atmosphere that every year we can create thanks to the support of factory teams, official teams, factory riders and all the families which are coming here with their kids to create a special event. When you win the masterclass, you get um, a contract with the Yamaha uh, and uh, you get a lot of support. And uh, the support helped you that you could go more out racing, more out to big races. Uh, it put it up on another level. And of course also for the kids, they may need to be more serious, physic, everything. Uh, but the help from Yamaha means everything. Well, I think, you know, first of all is to getting all the riders here, 65, 85, or 125, is to actually teach them a little bit how it is to be a professional rider, but also get it together with, with, with all the, the riders and the family for Yamaha Blue Crew and uh, show them, you know, what could be the future of the, of the young riders. Of course, for a few of them, this is also part of a step-up structure. And we are selecting the best rider to offer them support to go next. But once more, we're very proud to be the only manufacturer offering to a wide audience the possibility to experience something unique, which will stay for them, hopefully for all their life. One of the most rewarding things is listening to the parents and looking into the eyes of the kids. The emotion when the 65 kids are lining up on the same starting grid of the MEGP riders, looking to the same crowd, it's something which is really priceless. But also to see the mix of excitement, a bit of scaring, a bit of adrenaline of the parents, and at the end to see all of them that they all win together. And, and, and this is, the, again, the most rewarding part of this event. 
yes, for few, is a part of a motorsport step-up strategy, clearly, but for all of them is a moment which we stay, hopefully, and at least for one year, up to the next Super Finale. This is more than a, just a weekend event. This is a whole year event, because um, a Blue Crew is a really special thing. All the kids get the same package, they get the same stuff. They uh, get treated the same, even if you're on a high level, lower level, what level you're on, you get the same treatment from Yamaha. And that's really good because then everybody gets treated the same. They feel happy, I'm sure they feel stressed, I'm sure they feel uh, an opportunity. I'm sure the, the parents also understand how big is the gap. And to be that close from the professional world, just uh, it's kind of the dream can come true. It's the first step, but I believe right now with Yamaha, with this opportunity, the door is really open. They fire the YZ65, Yamaha's up into life. This is a one-make series, they bring their own bikes, they get the kit supported, uh, provided by uh, Yamaha Europe. They get their graphics kit, they get a whole bunch of goodies as well, but the winner of this, well, the top three, plus a uh, wild card, will go to the uh, super finale at the end of the year, or the masterclass. The fly race in 15 second waters turn to five. The gate about to drop here. 12 minutes plus two. Who will it be that gets that flying start? In fact, Coppins was about uh, middle of the gate, and he emerges in fourth place. He goes uphill, closes down. Oh, go down hard. 1.3 separate them. We still have a French leader in this. YZ Blue Crew FIM Europe Cup Super Finale, the 65cc race here at Saint Jean d'Angeli. Oh, and uh, throws it away. He'll pick himself up, rejoin the race. And uh, Tyler Leguerre, the French fans will go absolutely crazy for that. I mean, there's a 46 second advantage anyway between Durr and the third place rider Gordon. And he's going to cross the line, he's going to take the checkered flag. Tyler Leguerre styles it for the home fans. Big clutch hit, big panic rev as he delivers the number one plate to the winner, Davy Dirk. YZ85 race, keep your eyes peeled all the way to the outside of the gate, coming sweeping across, Danny Sankov. He almost made it happen, but then he just got stood up here. He's still emerging around about fourth or fifth position, though, as a couple of riders went down. But it was Sancho Sanio who led the way, the rider who was fastest, and then it was a 3.33 of Enea Alemani in that second position. Ika Diaz, the 277 though, getting caught and passed on the opening lap for four by Sankov. Sankov then up the inside of the 338. Of Ori Stark, that put him up a place and then he moved past Alemani for second before the rider with the pink helmet then had problems of his own. And you can see how frustrated he was. And there Alemani would not finish the race and was out of third position. Then, the challenge for the lead, Sanchezano ran wide. Sankov thought he made this pass stick, but Sanchezano managed to hold on. And then a couple of laps later, he then ran into difficulty. Sankov went around the outside, took over the lead as Sanchezano had to pick himself up. Then there was another mistake here, Ori Stark falling from third, he eventually emerged in fifth place, did the rider from Israel, but that allowed Lang to go through into third place, DS4, and Stark would finish in fifth, but on the final lap, through the final turn, it was Danny Sankov, who was almost nine seconds clear of Luis Raul Santiasanio, Tim Lang crossed the line in third, Ika DS4, Ori Stark. Paolo Pavesio, Yamaha Motor Europe Marketing and Motorsport Director, handing the winner's trophy to Danny Sankov. Fantastic YZ Blue Crew FIM Europe Cup Super Finale we had here in San Jean d'Angelo. A bit of bar banging going into the first turn, but it was your pole man, Salvini, who grabbed the early advantage as he led up the hill into turn two. 
Richo Scola was right there behind him in red. The 300 in the yellow helmet of Salvador Perez was next. Then we had a little bit of carnage going on on the first uphill double. Riders going down there and over the bars as they uh, jostled for position. But Salvador in the yellow helmet, he was under attack from Bartes first of all. And then Matis Bartes fell from fourth place. He re-emerged in sixth position. But further down the field, we had all kinds of things going on. That was uh, Skogberg making his way through. But then in second position, Mauricio Scolo found himself onto the rear end of a back marker as he was challenging Salvini for the lead. He picked himself up, lost about 10 seconds, got himself right back into contention. But on the final lap, he fell again at the bottom of the hill. He still managed to salvage that second position. He crossed the line 17 and a half seconds behind your eventual winner, Nicola Salvini. It was the Italian Salvini on the JK Racing Yamaha who crossed the line victorious. Riccio Scolo was second, Nikolai Skogberg was third from Perez and Bolt Beacon. Nicola Salvini will take his number one plaque from Paolo Pavesio, Yamaha Motor Europe Marketing and Motorsport Director. Last but not least, since the beginning, FAM Europe and in front, they've been so supporting while they have understood the uniqueness of this concept in securing that we can always be hosted in major events like Motocross of Nation or MLGP races when Motocross of Nation is overseas. And finally, it's a mix of things and is also due to the commitment which Yamaha has in keep growing this event year after year for the future.